Hey folks, Chris here with Chris Cross Crafts. I have built me a sled, a crosscut sled. Look at all the different things on this thing I can do. This is just the beginning. You want to see how I built it? You want to see some of the accessories that I've already made for it? You want to see how I put it together? It might inspire you to build your crosscut sled. I dare you to outdo me. All right, hold tight and watch the video. And see what you think. Well, no good cross-cut sled would be anything without good runners. I know I could have used oak or, or walnut or some other hardwood as my runner, but I chose these Craig aluminum track runners. Um, they're 30 inches long, and they have lots of screws for adjustment, so I can really tighten that thing in and get that thing perfectly zeroed in the slot so there's no slop. Uh, another thing is I like the length. I like the fact that they're aluminum, so they're not going to shrink like a hardwood runner will. And the friction is going to be minimal. And if things do occur, I can always come in and readjust these as needed. And you can see that's what I'm doing here. I'm adjusting these a screw by screw, going down the line, making sure there's no slop, no places where it catches, and just, you know, overall making sure the fit and finish is well. And it takes a little time, but it's well worth it in the end, especially if you can get these dialed in with no movement side to side. It really makes a difference in the quality of your sled. So you can see here, I'm just back to the original runner, just making sure, getting everything dialed in. All right, now we're off to the races, the sled races. You can see I'm milling a uh, groove in this. Essentially, this is a half inch diameter, 14 degree dovetail bit. I'm currently using the clean spore bit for this. I love this bit, good sharp uh, carbide, very thick carbide, so I usually get good life out of this bit. So I'm milling these uh, grooves out about every four inches on center into this Baltic birch. I chose Baltic birch just simply because it's so, so stable and it's got so many layers that it does give you that extra benefit um, of the stability and rigidity that you need. And so I'm still milling, and it was about this point I started having problems pushing the piece through. I struggled and checked and couldn't figure out what was going on, but I pressed on. And I'm just moving the table saw fence back again, making light for this. And as you can see, there's more and more grooves. This thing is full of those, those dovetail grooves, but you gotta have them. Here's you a quick glimpse of what that looks like. And I move the fence back and I'm back at it again. Keep blowing that port out, knowing there's something creating burn in there. It's, it's, it's hindering my progress. So I finally get in there and dig in and look at it a little more carefully. And Well, there was uh, some debris blocking my elbow on my dust port underneath there. Uh, a little, it's got a one and a one inch uh, hose coming up and something had gotten in there and it blocked it out. But anyway, so here we are, we're taking it all apart, cleaning it out, getting all the debris out of there, making it right. Figure out the problem, too little, too late, but needless to say, there's the last one, and it is all gridded out, ready to go. And now I'm off to cutting some of the fence parts. I'm double thicknessing the uh, fence that's going to be on the back side of the sled, and I'm using a single layer on the back on the front end uh, and by front I mean the part that's away from me and so that's literally every clamp I had that was small so I've got them all laid out putting plenty of glue on the two pieces that I am going to glue together I'm using those little corner blocks to kind of make sure I stay sort of aligned just anything any help you can get is a benefit and then I start the clamp process again this is all the clamps I had in that small size I've got my blend on there. After the glue dried, I'm kind of cleaning up that edge. So I run it through on one side, move the fence in a little bit, and then run it through on the other. This gives me two nice, clean, straight parallel edges. And so now, I'm ready to mount the runners. And so I'm too cheap and too poor to have dimes or really good washers, so I threw some pennies in the slots to raise those up. And I'm kind of dry fitting this first. I want to make sure everything's going to fit. And it looks good. 
I set my fence at about 12 inches and that gives me the spacing I needed from side to side. And so here we are, I'm kind of just again making sure everything is going to right, going to be right, laying it out, and making some marks just for reference. And here I'm using some CA glue on these runners. Now I did lightly scuff those to get rid of any oil, debris, dirt on there. And I put the glue on the runner and sprayed a little accelerator on the back. Now it's just a little bit of wait time. And you can see I was playing thumb wars. Give that a little time to cure, a little time to dry. And with that accelerator, that CA glue does pretty quick. So I flip it over, make sure everything's good, and then screw it in. You can see I'm using the Vix bit here to make sure everything's nice and centered so it doesn't get, get the screws don't go in sideways or um, create problems by being all cattywampus. And more screws, more time, more work. But that's what you got to do to build it right. So, take my pennies out. I'll put them back in the bank later. My daughter will never miss them out of her piggy bank, so that worked out pretty well. And now it's time to create the dado groove. I do have my dado stack in there. And I decided if I was going to build a sled, I wanted it versatile and easily replaceable if I damaged it or used a different blade or whatever. So I decided I was going to put a replaceable insert in there. So here I am creating this dado, cleaning it out in preparation to make the insert. This was a handy feature. I'm really glad I took the extra time to do this. And so now I've got my groove cut and it's time to make sure I've got it, the depth of cut just right. Well, of course I didn't, so I went at it again. And it's always best to sneak up on something like that. You don't want to go all at it and then cut it too deep the first pass. So here we are, making a second pass. The things we do as woodworkers, lots of repetition. And so I check it again. And of course, I'm still not right. So I go at it one more time. I would be a master datoer after this, you'd think. And there we go. Fit and finish is good. It's exactly what I wanted. So now I'm going to rip my pieces um, down to make sure everything's good to go. I made a scrap piece there and checked it just to confirm. Got my pieces ripped and I went ahead and I'll, I've cut three of those so I've got uh, extra and I plan on if I've got a thicker cross cut blade or thinner cross cut blade or if I do anything then I need that then I'll have backups to go in there. That's a good look at the replacement bit that I bought after I burnt my cling spore. That's the match fit bit. That bit's unique. It's got a line there so you know exactly how high to raise it up. It's also got a slight curve right where the cutter meets the shank. That's a nice feature because that drastically reduces how much sanding's got to be done. Anyway, finishing up the fence here, got two grooves on one side, one on the other, and then one on top. Going to make room for lots of hold downs and lots of different fixture capabilities. Alright, so getting everything dialed in here for my insert, laying out all my holes that I'm going to put in here. And I think I went with uh, seven or eight per side. It's excessive, I know. but. It's not going to go anywhere. I decided to use quarter 20 flat head uh, machine screws. They're half inch long, so they're not, not going to have a lot of length, but they don't need it. Um, they go through the insert piece into T-nuts that I'm going to put on the bottom side. So I'm pre-drilling out that uh, insert piece to make sure that's good to go. And remember, I've got three of those, so I've got a template now to be able to cut the other three the same, or the other two the same way. So getting those through holes done on it, flip it over, now it's time to put in the T-nuts. And uh, I'm drilling out my three quarter inch hole for those. I'm recessing those in about a sixteenth. You definitely don't want those sticking out while you're trying to maintain friction free on a sled. So I got those in. And time to bang them in with a hammer. Seems like I just did this with the CNC. Oh wait, I did. I brought back a little PTSD, but that's okay. So I got the insert put in. And I'm going to start getting those uh, tightened up one at a time because I'm going to draw those in. But before I do, I realize that uh, because of the stud that sticks out on the inside of that T-nut, I'm going to have to go ahead and finish drilling those out again. I drilled them out a quarter inch originally, uh, then realized that thing's 5 16 so I had to re-drill it. A lot of repetition, like I said earlier, but that's the way it goes. 
So anyway, tightening up the uh, T-nuts by using a screw to actually jaw them in tight. And so I'm gonna working my way down each one of those holes, making sure everything's getting it lined out. Now it's time to get them all put in. I'm gonna do a final test. All right. Now comes the fun part, all that sanding. And I'll tell you, this is where I'm thankful I switched over to that match fit router bit. Because that dovetail bit really cut down on how much sanding was required. The sharp edges that are left from a normal uh, dovetail bit, they definitely need to be uh, eased over to say the least. So I'm spending a lot of time here getting those eased over by hand, trying method after method. Get that done, now it's time to buzz sand that with my, uh, my Bosch orbital there. Don't forget the fence, gotta get that sanded as well. Everything's gotta be smooth and clean. And now comes the fun part. I am laying out for the fence area there. And I came in one inch from the corner and I'm going ahead and pre-drill in all my holes. And I'm using a uh, countersink bit to make sure that the holes actually are recessed in. You can see here I'm actually still using those slots to hold the fence in place. That, that system is fantastic, I'm telling you. That's all kind of versatility. I won't tell you the mistake that I made actually locked that clamp in there by accident and didn't even pay attention. Made my kerf, get the kerf cut done on the insert so that way that part's complete. And now I'm using the Williaming method to do a five cut. And I'm not gonna go through that process. It's a bunch of math, fancy numbers, and yada yada, blah, blah, blah. But essentially when you go through that, you should be able to determine how square you are. Right now, I'm 24 thousandths out. Well, I performed this operation uh, three more times and ended up coming to 0 0.0004 square. That's pretty dang good. Now it's time to build a jig for this thing. So I took a piece of square particle board and kind of got that cut right in half at an angle, 45 degrees, and I'm still using the sled jig and making all sorts of things. Now I'm gluing those two triangles together. getting it nailed together and I'm going to go ahead and put some screws in there as well. I want to make sure this is uh, good to go and uh, we don't have to worry about it because I need to uh, work on this thing now and not wait on glue to dry. Any screws aren't going to hurt anything because I'm not planning on cutting all the way through. So lay this thing out, get it square since I am .0004, squared both sides, got it in there, now it's time to test it out. So I'll make myself a little miter here out of some scrap MDF I had laying around and you can see that's what the jig looks like you can actually hold pieces down I have slots uh, screwed into the front and so I can hold pieces into it from the face of it and it mounts right onto the jig using some T-bolts and according to my Inkra guaranteed square that miter is perfecto pretty square huh All right, I want to stop for a second and just take a minute to show you a safety concern. Um, and, you know, if you're going to build a sled, obviously you're going to run into this case where your blade is exposed. I've raised it all the way up and pushed it to where it meets the apex on the, on the inside part of the fence. Well, that leaves me roughly about three inches here that's exposed. Well, I don't want that. And I was going to build something anyway, but this gives me an exact measurement so I know to give myself a little clearance. So I'm gonna put down a shim because this is actually sticking in recessing from the edge. Uh, that's what I needed to do to make the fence perfectly square. So what we'll do is I've notched this out and that'll sit here right in the middle of where my curve's gonna be. I've got uh, matching notched pieces that will go on either side of that and that'll sit flush at the top there. Then I have another piece to complete the square so to speak uh, and then that's my dead on measurement of how much is exposed so now I'm going to cap it with that and I'm going to leave this open in here so that I can see when that blade reaches that point eventually I may put some plexiglass on it or something uh, but for now I'm going to leave that exposed that'll give me sort of a viewfinder to know 
when this blade has reached this piece and uh, if I am for whatever reason fully uh, fully raised on the blade at least I'll be able to see that and know my limits so anyway a uh, quick little box I'm going to put together and um, I've already measured I'm going to have clearance if I use one and a quarter nails on either side uh, it's not going to interfere to the center of the curve so I'm uh, going to knock that out real quick and then we'll come back all right so a lot of talking here and you can see I'm just nailing that piece in. Again, I'm offsetting where I know that curve will be. I definitely don't plan on using a dado with this. If I do need a dado, I will certainly make a different sled uh, that will accommodate dado widths. Uh, for now, it'll just be my combo blade or my crosscut blade one that will be used in this. So let's make the first pass and kind of see what we look like here. And the problem is when you're holding the camera, you don't really pay much attention. So you just go ahead and cut all the way through. Well, that lesson learned there. Ruined my nice clean piece of plywood. All right, here it is. The micro jig match fit dovetail inspired crosscut sled. Uh, you see this thing is fully gridded out so I can do clamps from any direction. Uh, no matter which side of the table, I can come in from this side that side, I can come in on top of the fence, I can come in on the face of the fence, and it doesn't have to be these clamps. I can even use these little fixtures that they offer, uh, which I currently have one set in here. I'm using this as my adjustable fence to uh, lock in different lengths. Eventually, I will put in a flip stop style fence, uh, but I'm still sort of rumbling through that in my head to figure out exactly how I want to do that so that it meets all the things that I want to do with it. But in the meantime, this is uh, going to be my stop, and it works really well. Uh, you see this thing has got an integrated um, replaceable kerf insert, so I can replace this if I use a, a wider blade um, or a full kerf blade. I can simply uh, use this. I've already got the pattern, so I can drill these out the same as this. So we're good to go there. This thing is just, just incredible. Um, I've already got it set up for using a variety of different clamps and different pole downs. Um, I even built... I've already got a jig here for doing sliders, which works absolutely perfect. You slide in a standard um, T-Track stud. Uh, you can see that works really well. It's a little bit snug, but works fine. I uh, come right in here. I can lock this down. And that's going to allow me to make a lot of different jigs as well. But you can see, once I get this dialed in and locked in place, this gets held there. Then, no matter what I'm doing, if I'm uh, making a miter cut, I can come right in here, make my miter cut. I've got plenty of length here for most picture frames, uh, but for whatever reason, if it's longer, I can also do that. If i got a really short piece, I've integrated the uh, dovetail system here on the, on the edge of these as well, so I can actually lock this piece in place so that my hands are out of the way. If it's something longer, obviously I've got that capability as well. I've got this side fully open, so I can take my fence off, slide this where I need it to be, and then I'm right back in the same direction. I can hold it down by hand, or I've got a series of these uh, dovetails already integrated into the edge, so I can lock this down. It's not going anywhere. Safely make my cut, unclamp it, and then go about my business of completing the miter. Uh, this thing is just fantastic. Um, I am really excited. You might notice I did take away some of the, the corner here with a little curve. I really didn't necessarily think I needed that, um, but it also helped reduce some of the weight. But I've got this fence fully glued in. I've got this fence uh, screwed in with uh, some two inch screws. And man, I took the, did the five cut method on this. Uh, it took me three tries, four tries, but I've got this thing dialed in to .0004. I don't think I could have gotten it any more accurate, so definitely going to leave that alone. Um, this thing works exceptionally well, man. I am super excited. I've been wanting this sled since I started my shop back up again, uh, but I just kept putting it off because I kept rattling around in my head on just the right design that I wanted for, for my machine. Uh, this will also allow me to get this thing fully integrated with different jigs, different fixtures, different hold downs. Man, it is expandable beyond belief. This match fit dovetail system, I was whenever I did my drill press table and tested everything out on it, I absolutely fell in love and I knew that's what I wanted from a crosscut sled. 
Um, it has done everything that I wanted it to do. Um, and I have cut out a lot of little parts here already just in, in fixing and adjusting and playing and getting dialed in. But again, this is Chris with the MatchFit Dovetail System Inspired Crosscut Sled. I dare you to go outdo me on your sled. Prove me wrong. This is probably the best one I've ever seen. So I did have some people tell me it might be a little big. It might be. Uh, but this allows me to do anything I want to do. And, uh, and if I decide I need to make a smaller one, I'll make a smaller one. But for now, this is, this is it. This is not really that heavy. Uh, I can move it around easily. It hangs right on my wall. Uh, so here's my sled. What do you think? Let me know. Uh, give me a comment down below and uh, give me your opinion. And while you're down there, hit that little subscribe button. And uh, you know, once you do that, click the little bell. You never know. You might be wanting to be notified one more time of another video that I do. Maybe not. Who knows? But anyway, nothing like this is uh, what we got. And I'm super excited about it. I can't wait to do more projects and uh, see, what else, see what else I can add to this thing to make it even better. Uh, so this is Chris with Criss Cross Crafts and the Micro Jig Match Fit Dovetail Inspired Crosscut Sled from my table saw. Till next time. Want to see what an idiot looks like? I'm building this sled. That's not the idiot part. This thing is built fantastic. The idiot part was I used this clamp. To hold this fence in place. While I dialed it in and screwed it in place. Well, I can't get it out now. Looks like I have a permanent clamp fixture. Yep.